This is a Protoss guide that I designed just to get you guys on track for the game, to teach you the right way to play Protoss. Do not follow builds beyond where I mention because then you will never be good at this game. This is very important. The meta and build orders make decent players bad. You forget how to think and thinking in this game is everything. You need to think. You need to be creative. Creativity makes a player good. The thinking must come from you if you want to succeed. If you do not have it, you will lose. Strategy guides are lies. Do not give in to that overhyped marketing scheme. It is ruining you guys and as a result it is ruining this game. All for the sake of money. The same is true for League of Legends. Because you guys can't think because of the marketing, the same top players will remain at the top despite the fact that I know most of you can do better. You could be better. If only you would just apply yourselves and stop copying them, then you would prove it. Next year, I'll be attempting to do it myself. I haven't done it yet because it's difficult for me. Not because pros are good, but because I am disabled and have a handicap when it comes to this game. The reason why most of my videos cover my eyes is because one doesn't cooperate. This is a game of accuracy, so it is very hard for me. On top of that, I have a terrible memory, so I tend to forget little things. Another thing is I have ataxia, and basically what that is, is my hands and eyes do not cooperate, and my eyes don't cooperate along with themselves. My hands and eyes do not cooperate, so it's very hard for me, but I know I can still get to Masters, at least. The reason why I have what I have is because I have a brain tumor. I have had four surgeries, and I am pretty damn banged up now, but I've been able to think like a mofo because of it all, so that is how I apply myself, and I use my thinking to teach you. To better the generation after mine. Because of all that, I have a serious passion about this game. I have a passion because this is all I have. I can't work. I can't hang with friends. Well, too often anyway. They're always busy working or you know, what have you. This is it. I make the best of it. And the times I do see them, I can't do much. I start feeling sick. I start feeling ill, nauseous, you know, or things like that. Anyway, the time for feels is over. But before I move on, I would like to say that I stream at twitch.tv slash a lot of zlot. So if you want, you can come cheer me on. <laughs> and a disabled guy making it to masters, maybe grandmasters, who knows, uh, make it to some of the big leagues, that'd be cool. Anyway, with that said, let's get on with this. Hey guys, Knight here. Today, we have what I call the perfect Protoss opening. It is built and designed around being aggressive. The beauty of this build is it allows you to deal with greedy players and or aggro players as well, and for the noobs that you might be facing, an all-in. What an all-in really is, is basically an aggro build from an unskilled player. I'll be doing a rundown of the build first, thereafter I will go over the replay, which covers what I do fairly well. But this player does some bizarre things, so keep that in mind. First thing you do is start making workers, okay, you stop at 8 workers. You wait. You place a pylon. Once you have enough for a probe, chrono two of them out. So you wait for one. While that one's building, you, you hit chrono. But the second you start the probe, hit chrono. It'll start producing. You will have enough for the second one by the time that one finishes. So then you have two. The pylon will finish, and you'll have ten workers. Now you wait till you can place a gateway. While the gateway is being built, you will now chrono two more workers and build an assimilator. While that is happening, you get another pylon. Do not put workers on the gas yet. The gateway will complete. Build a zealot. While that is happening, build a cyber and throw three workers into gas. The zealot will complete. Chrono out another zealot, and then after that, depending on the race, chrono out a final zealot or stalker. Use chrono on the warp tech once. At this point, the build is complete. You apply pressure and respond to what you see from your opponent. So now I'll go over this live with you and show you it in action. Remember, it is an aggressive greed punishment build that can still be turned into any kind of play. So with that said, let's go ahead and get this started. Alright, so here's the Zerg buddy. Here's me. Okay, so no edits for this portion. So if I screw up, my bad, but, you know, it's live, so... <clears throat> And I don't play perfectly for this. This is like one of my first or second match of the day. But it doesn't matter. It's a solid build, and I'm pretty good at the game, so. Oh, sounds on. That's bad. Alright, so one worker's done, another worker is on its way, as I said. Alright, so you see, instantly pylon. That, that's um, 
a little different, a little different, because normally you'd be building a, another um, worker, but I don't for a reason. Okay, so now I chrono these two out, and basically I feel this is actually the right way chrono is supposed to you be used is while buildings are being produced, essentially, and you get workers while you're producing buildings. You don't just chrono, 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 and have nothing building. You want to stop workers and then save up for buildings and then chrono workers to catch back up, but your buildings pop out sooner. And you're still up to par with workers, essentially. That's how I feel it should be. So now the gateway went down at 10, and now I chrono two more workers. So at this point, I'll be getting another pylon and an assimilator. Not in that order, of course, but... <clears throat> And then you just kind of you just kind of play it out, and basically build what you can afford. For the most part, that's pretty pretty much um, how I figured this build out was building what I can afford, but also um, guiding it towards aggression. Okay, so there's that other pylon, and then now since I had the 14 workers, I get two more workers. These don't get chronoed though. <clears throat> so now instantly make a zealot. I chrono this one by accident. I was like, ah. God dang it! And I just said, um, yeah, I said oops too. But I said, don't chrono the that zealot out, um, or don't chrono the workers. I lied. I, I think you're supposed to chrono those two. Actually, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm right. I'm right. Never mind. Never mind. You don't chrono because you need the two. That's right. Okay, I'm an idiot. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is that noise? So there goes the zealot. Now here you chrono. Uh, the other zealot out. <clears throat> but again, I've been messing up, so. But you're supposed to chrono the other zealot out here. I look at it and I was like, dang it. And you have the perfect amount of uh, energy, too. So I was just like, screw it, I'll just do it. I don't know why. I think I decided to go with another zealot. Yeah, I just went with another zealot because the Cybernex core is a little tiny bit late. But it was okay. Uh, I don't see the zerglings. I originally thought, I was like, oh, that's fine. I was like, oh, what? 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 And I come back, I'm like, oh man. But it's fine because my build is fucking godlike, so. Um, so he targets that, of course. Zealot pops out, so this is why I built the second Zealot, because I'm like, you know, he's Zerk, so that's why I built another Zealot. That's me adapting. I fucked up with my build, of course, but more than likely, I was going to be building another Zealot anyways. It's just that I couldn't, um, what's it called? Get warp on its way. I couldn't speed that up or, you know, the whole nine yards. So here, I, I'm not being aggressive, I'm just defending, because I know he cut production for this. So I just saved that bad boy. <clears throat> so I know his econ is not going to be anywhere near as good as mine. I know his base is going to be anywhere near as advanced as mine. So I'm basically playing it smart from here. But, if you notice, look where my zealots are going. They are meant to do damage. They are meant to die. They are meant to attack. They are meant to fight. Overall, they're meant to apply pressure. Okay, if you can save them, save them. But they're meant to apply pressure. All right. <clears throat> so here I'm adapting. I went ahead and built another gateway and a robo. Normally I'd expand first, but because I know his economy is probably taking a hit, that he's not going to be expanding, or he might not um, commit to workers yet. He might make more units and just counterattack me. You know, and then stop me from expanding when I just dumped a lot of the uh, resources into it, and then I'm out a lot of resources. And it would have just been bad for me if that happened. So I played smart, and I decided I'm just going to work on my one base economy, uh, get a few production buildings down, get some su uh, supply, and get some units. And right there, I was about to move out, and I'm like, okay, but I, exactly what I thought happened. And I'm like, okay. He has like 50,000 Zerglings, so that means he's probably got like three um, drones, you know, or whatever. And I just, I'm playing safe. I'm playing right. Um, I would have had another Zealot or Stalker here, but because the uh, Immortal was supply block, because I messed up a pylon. Oh, I was going to put one out there, but I forgot to put it in the base earlier, because uh, the, Z the Zerglings, essentially. So I canceled the Zealot, <coughs> one of them, and built the Immortal. And then now the pylon's done, so I can make more stuff. And I'm constantly trying to move out, because I know his economy is nowhere near as good as mine right now. Also, he has nothing but zerglings, and I have, uh, what's it called? Zealots, essentially. Um, I want to put a forge down, but at the same time, I don't know where he's at, and I'm trying to get my expansion down. So if I put a forge now, 
and expanded, I'm cutting way too much uh, resources into the expansion. And if he counterattacks me, I just flat out lose, or I take a lot of damage essentially. So I'm sending a worker out, uh, trying to basically scout halfly and trying to place a pylon. He catches it, I'm like, just, you know, whatever, put a pylon. And I move out towards the pylon, because I know he's going to try to kill it. That's the goal, that's the bait. I have a few units at home, but uh, I send them and I warp more in and just defend with those two. Because I know he's going to uh, send a counterattack, there it goes. <clears throat> but I know he can't attack me, so I move forward anyways, and I just cancel, and I just hold him off. Sacrifice a pylon, possibly, if he goes back for it. I have units back at home, defending. There goes the pylon. My army's still going. The pylon's still alive. So he's on his way back home. Alright. <clears throat> Here, I figured I got him. I got him. It's fine. I got Zealots. He's going to show up. He loses a few Zerglings here, fortunately for me. Three Zer uh, Zerglings, I'll take it. I'm checking, I'm like, oh crap, he has a lot of spines there. I'm like, okay. Well, I got an Immortal. I'm like, bring it, spines. Ten damage my butt. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Run away as far as I can. This is why I like the Mothership. Just bop. He runs back. And again, I always forget to mention this, or I will mention this, I don't remember. But basically, my opponent is not bad. Um, he's he's got a lot of awareness, a lot of control. He's he's actually quite decent. So look at this guy. Like he's very aware. Like he's very aware. He's he's smart. He's not stupid. Like he cut a lot of corners. Don't get me wrong, but he's not bad. The timing of when I took the cut from his play and the timing I took from where I cut just now is a fluke chance between the two of them. Like, it was just completely perfectly on time and it was completely just by fluke. It's crazy. Um, yeah. So it, was, it wasn't an easy match at all. And I was making a few mistakes here and there. But uh, it wasn't too bad by me. <laughs> so yeah, I, I didn't realize that... Uh, What's it called? I knew those were mine at that point because I was able to place it and they just moved. If it wasn't mine, it would have been like, eh, eh, eh. so I didn't bother checking them. But here, I always check my walls now. So I'm like, uh, what? Getting my workers done, getting everything done, checking everything, doing this and that, this and that. Again, I'm just trying to play solid. So he has a lot of, uh, Zerglings, so I was like, I'm just going to go straight into uh, Colossi. And I'm like, okay, they're not making it. Alright, fine. And I just go ahead and cancel that, and I place it somewhere else, essentially. Just move it over. <clears throat> I'm checking around, trying to feel around for it. Trying to find the best place. <clears throat> right here, I, I try to warp a... <laughs> I was like, what the... what? I was like, oh, well, that ground looks different. Oh, okay, that's why. I didn't realize. I'm like, oh, look at that, look at that. So I know, because this is all people do, is they just they uh, build Zerglings and just try to run by the whole time. <clears throat> I was kind of shocked to not see Banelings, but the reason why Banelings didn't show up is because he's playing the meta, and he's just going to go straight into Mutalisks. And that's what anybody does, just Muta Zerglings. Against everything, everyone, everywhere. But yeah. So I go ahead and drop stuff out over here. He instantly responds to this, by the way. Like I said, he's not bad. So I see that I'm losing. Grab what I can. Get the heck out of there. <clears throat> the point was just to put up an aggression. Put up some aggression. Plan to meet up here and actually poke out. There we go. I decide to wall off just in case because he's very committed into aggression and if I need to I could just kill off the pylon and move out but I can also use my prism to move stuff around and just you know warp stuff in at my base or in front of it or what have you because I'm not tearing and I can't move my wall I just you know whatever I'll just take the hundred damage it's better than losing my economy or the hundred minerals loss 
So here, I catch him with those things going down. Uh, barely just missed the opportunity. This is cool right here. The beautiful thing about force fields, by the way, is you don't need to trap units in or out. You can actually just make it to where your zealots are fighting zerglings one on one. You know what I mean? So they're not getting surrounded. You're preventing him from running up to you. So I space mine sometimes. It depends on the composition. It's me responding, essentially. So I seen a bunch of these zerglings. So I figure, you know what? I'm just going to make them uh, have little thin walls. And they're just going to fight one versus one the whole time. Let my stalkers and everything else fire at everything, you know? And all he has is zerglings. So, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, go back to my vision. Keep producing. Bunch of zealots, a lot of zealots, my name, guys. A lot of zealot, and he just leaves. Anyways, that's it. So take it real, keep it easy, have a good one. Again, any questions, let me know. Very simple. This build, this build works really well. I win a lot of matches using it. And yeah, like I said, it allows you to go anywhere with it. And it puts a lot of pressure and denies your opponent from going anywhere where they want to go. Anyways, that's it. <laughs> Peace.